Hey everybody, I am back. I am adjusting my camera. And I am not gonna bother looking at Facebook while I do this because it's totally distracting. So if you come on while I'm doing this and you wanna say hi, leave a heart, I will send you love back. Um, so today, this is my third little mini Facebook Live video. That is a lesson that loosely will give you an idea of what my classes are like. I just came out with uh, in my April and May courses and I am doing a new thing this uh, these two months, which is you can sign up for any or all of them and by donation and you will be getting all eight videos so you don't have to commit to coming to all eight weeks of class but you will regardless get the video links um, if you register so so this one is for friday nights um, and we are going to be exploring one of my favorite subjects right now in the moment geometry and of course, my always favorite uh, topic is mandala inspired art. And so, so we're gonna combine the two a little bit. Obviously they're already combined um, in different cultures, but um, the way I do it is obviously not traditional and it's um, just exploration of a little bit of geometry and a little bit of what makes a mandala. A mandala. So I'm going to show you today a little uh, way of doing it, one way of doing it that we will explore a little bit deeper on the in the class. And so, so what you're going to need is a pad of paper. So if you're going to use watercolor to color it in, you're going to definitely want to use watercolor paper or mixed media paper. So I just have to make this a little higher so you can actually see everything. And um, let's see, what else do we need? We need watercolors, if you're gonna use watercolor. And that's the other thing about my classes is that I, that I loosely say what the technique is going to be that we're gonna, or the um, media that we're gonna use, but it's always optional. So if you want to color your mandala geometry pieces in with colored pencil, you can feel free to do that, whatever you feel comfortable with. But I will be demoing watercolor throughout the eight weeks. Maybe a little bit of mixed media with colored pencil or something else. So if you're gonna join me now, which is gonna be maybe a half hour, 45 minutes to an hour, who knows, and um, you're gonna need a pencil and a paintbrush if you're using watercolor. If not, don't worry about it. A uh, pen is optional, a black pen, an eraser. So I have a bunch of different ways to make circles. I'm gonna make this easy on my Facebook friends. So if you don't have a compass, you don't need one. So I'm gonna show you how to do this without a compass. But if you want to use a compass, go right ahead and you'll, um, you'll figure that out, that part out, because I can't do both at the same time. So, I mean, I have all these really cool things to make circles with. This is a helix tool that I love that I tell my students about, and you can make color wheels and mandalas and all different kinds of geometric forms with this. I also went and got the lesser expensive version of it, which was like $3, and um, all different kinds of fun supplies that you can find. Uh, if you have any shape templates, grab them. Not that anybody would really have those lying around, but <laughs> you might. Um, I have a little set of these that are fun. And like I said, if you do, oh, also, and a piece of computer paper and a pair of scissors. Um, that is gonna be um, important because we're not gonna use a compass. And then uh, something that you can trace a circle with, so a roll of tape, a, a bowl, a dish, whatever fits on your paper. Okay, so you're also gonna need a cup of water, which is, you know, 
if you're gonna use watercolor and a little towel, which I use cloth towels. I have recycled a sheet that I'm liking because it's nice and absorbent. So I don't even know if we're gonna get to that point where we can play with watercolor today, but I am going to try. So let's see, can you see everything? Yeah. So I'm going to show you a little bit of my pieces that I made during my last mandala. Oh, actually it wasn't a mandala class. It was a geometric, uh, geometry uh, art and art watercolor class. Um, but I want to show you some of the pieces that we made. So you're going to see a little bit of glare because I, I matted them. I got this new really cool um, circle, circle mat cutter. So I'm just going to sh um, quickly show these to you. This is just a little bit of fun that we had in that class. So all we just do all different kinds of methods and techniques and ways of using all different kinds of geometric shapes. And but you will be able to make your own. So if you want to get representational or use symbols. I'll show you a little bit of that today as well because we're not only gonna just do one style, we're gonna do many styles. So you'll get to find which style and which way you like to work if you um, sign up for the class. So I'm just gonna clean this off real quick because if I start to use it, it's not a good idea to use a dirty palette. So this was from my class yesterday and maintenance of art tools is super important. I, um, I try to take care of them as best I can. Some of my old brushes, I, I got in trouble the other day because another artist saw that I left artist, <laughs> my old brushes in water overnight. But you know, if you want your supplies to last, you have to take care of them, so. And this is a, a watercolor set that I've had for 32 years, I think. Since so I was 18, I think it was the first thing I ever bought with a credit card. I had like a student credit card with probably like $500 <laughs> limit on it. And the first thing I did was buy this. And it was the best purchase I think I've ever made. Because you can take it anywhere. You can store water in it. It comes with a brush. It had a little sponge too, but I lost that. Okay, so that's for later if we get there. Um, so for now, I think, um, and I'm gonna like, improvise a little bit because I just, I know that some of you don't have the tools that I have. So I'm gonna make it really easy for you. And I'm gonna adjust my camera a little bit. So in order to, to figure out quadrants, we, um, we either need to use a ruler and, um, and a compass, or I'm gonna play around with this this method. And I actually need a ruler, because that ruler is not good enough. I love that I have everything. I'm on a rolly ball right now, and I can literally roll over to my to my drawers of art supplies, and like I have like everything at my uh, command that I need most of the time. <laughs> so you're gonna take your ruler. And we're gonna find the center of the paper. Now use your watercolor paper for this part, and then I'll show you what we're gonna do with the computer paper next. So you're gonna find the center of the paper um, by placing your ruler up at the top. And it doesn't have to be exact, so don't worry about it. Um, just get close to the center as you can. So, uh, my paper is seven and a half inches, so it's about three and three quarters. And then what you're gonna do, so you make a little tick mark on both of those measurements and you make a line going straight down, which would be vertical. And then we're gonna make the horizontal. So we're gonna line, we're gonna rotate our drawing and we're gonna find the center there, so it's four inches, and then just slide your ruler down and four inches there. And then you're gonna connect those lines, those little marks with a line, the horizontal line. So we have a little bit of a 
It's a little off, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> I always say humans are not perfect, so why should we bother trying? <laughs> In art, that is. There's other things that you have to be a little bit more um, specific about, like math, but and measuring and things like that, building a house. But um, with my kind of art, the kind of art that I make, I don't, I don't want to be a computer. You know, I don't want it to look like computer art. I want it to look like it's handmade. So I give myself a lot of leeway. Okay, so we are going to now take our computer paper and you're gonna take something that fits on the paper because we want our circle to fit on the paper. And you're just going to, and there's other ways to do this obviously, but this is the way that I came up with. And you're gonna trace it. And you're gonna cut it out. So I always told my middle school students at Richfield Academy, hi everyone, who's uh, one of my, was one of my students if you're watching me on Facebook Live. Um, You'll remember this, I always told them that there's many ways from point A to point B. So I didn't wanna to be too subversive, but I did wanna tell them if any adult or teacher or anybody told them that there's only one way to do something that they at least in their mind can know, that's not true. And I always welcomed them if they found a different way or maybe even a better way than I was doing things that they could tell me. And um, I learned a lot from my students over those nine years. Actually, I've been teaching for 26 years or something like that. So I've, I learned a lot from 20, actually 24 years from all of my students. So you have your circle and you are going to Fold it in half. Okay, I'm gonna fold it in half one way and you're gonna open it back up. Sometimes I like to fold it both ways. You know, I used salt in my journal yesterday on the experimental class and it's like everywhere. <laughs> it's just coming out of my journal. Um, so we're gonna fold it in half that way. And then we're gonna take it, our circle, we're gonna open it back up and we're gonna fold it in half the other way. And you can line it up if you want with the other fold. Take your fingernail if you have one or a pencil or a pen and just crease it. And then I like, again, like to do it the other way. And now you have four quadrants that are somewhat equal of a circle and we're gonna play with that so if you want now you can mark the uh, little fold marks up towards the edge of the circle and that will allow you to line it up and now trace the circle and if it doesn't line up perfectly don't worry about it again we are not machines so just get as close as you can and if you have a compass and a ruler and you want to do this at another time then you can get a little bit more close to matching up those lines and the circle okay so we have that. Okay, so we're gonna work with just one quadrant. And again, this is just one method, so don't think that we're gonna do this for eight weeks. That's not true. Unless you wanna just take eight weeks and you wanna come every week and you wanna work on that specific piece and you want it to take eight weeks, that's totally valid. Um, you can work however you want. It's your two hours. You get to show up how you want to show up, okay? So there's a couple ways to do this next, and I'm not sure exactly which way I want to do it. Um, but you can cut out a quadrant, and I think that that's the way I taught my students a long time ago. So let's just work with one quadrant at a time. 
And if you don't want to, you can keep your circle hole and you can kind of play around with a different way of working while I'm doing this. And then you'll have two different ways to do it. But um, this is only gonna be one of the mandalas that we're gonna create. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm gonna take my, hmm, I know what I'm gonna do. I am gonna make this into um, halves, okay? So I'm gonna turn this, I'm gonna fold it like this. Yeah, that way I will get more, I will get more little lines in my, in my drawing. Okay, so we're gonna open it back up. So now I have split my quadrant in half and maybe it might help to take your ruler out and make a line down the center. If you want, you don't have to. But visually, I think it will help. Okay, so we're gonna keep this simple because I wanna get to the watercolor part. So now what you're gonna do is you have your, I'm gonna close my journal so you can see this on a different background because white on white with my cameras don't, doesn't always work. So now you're gonna draw whatever you want in these two quadrants, okay? So it can be hearts or flowers or a moon and a sun or more geometric shapes. Um, you can take out your shape uh, if you have a shape template. You can you know, take it out and make a design on it. But I'm gonna do something really simple. I am going to make a flower. Some flower petals. On just half of my quadrant. Okay, so I made um, the flower petals. And on this one, I'm going to make some more flower petals. I'm gonna make them a little bit different. I'll make one more. Okay, so now I have uh, a quarter, yeah, no, a half, sorry, half of a quarter, right? So I have a half a drawing on this side and a half a drawing on that side. You can write words on it, you can do whatever you want at this point, okay? So, oh, if you have a little uh, thing of tape, I just realized that mine is sitting right here, it's much easier to tape it onto your design than it is to have it be moving around. So if you've got some little office tape somewhere, uh, that might help. And let's see, I'm gonna take a piece of scrap paper from my cutout. So this is just the computer paper scrap piece. And I'm gonna take my quadrant and I'm going to flip it over. I'm gonna put my tape on the side because I'm gonna need that eventually. So what I'm gonna do next is something that I use in almost all of my classes, I think. I've used it in every class so far this year. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our own transfer paper. So you're just gonna take your pencil, whatever pencil you have in your hand, as long as it's not a colored pencil. If it's a colored pencil, you just want a graphite pencil. And you're gonna make some graphite um, transfer paper on the back. And you can buy tr graphite transfer paper, but I don't know, I just feel like it's a waste of money because you can make it. 
but if you do this process a lot, you might actually want to pick up some. They come in a roll. And Sarl, S-A-R-A-L, I think is the company that I have used before. I like it. Try to get the non-waxy kind, because if it's waxy, it kind of comes off on your, on your drawing. So we're just making old school carbon paper, like when I was a kid, anyway. And uh, I loved that stuff. <laughs> so you are then going to place your drawing down onto one of your quadrants. I'm just gonna start on the left side and I'm going to put the tape, try not to put the tape over your drawing. So whatever you drew is cool. You don't have to draw what I'm drawing. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is I am going to now take my pencil again and I'm going to trace my lines. And at this point, if you want to change anything, that's when you're going to do it. You're going to change it now because if there's something on your drawing that you don't like, you're going to need to, to change it before you transfer it on. So you can totally change it. I'm gonna change it a little bit. It's always fine to change your mind. And just check to see if your lines have transferred and they're really light. And if they're too light, then you wanna take this off, erase that and put a second uh, layer of graphite onto your paper, to the back of your paper, cause it's just not dark enough. It's not transferring, but it should work. Now, of course, this isn't geometry per se, you know, we're, we're kind of taking a little bit of liberty in, in calling this geometry, but we did make a circle and we do have four quadrants. So that is basic geometry in my book. <laughs> okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to pick up this little piece of paper and we're going to rotate it and we're going to continue tracing. And if it helps, because it's hard to see your lines once you've drawn it once, it's hard to tell which lines you, you're drawing, you can use colored pencils for this part and it will make the lines stand out. And every once in a while you can check to see if your lines are transferring still because at some point, sometimes the transfer paper on the back gets a little um, light overused. So it means you have to possibly add some more graphite to it. Okay, and I'll pick it up again, transfer it again. So you kind of want to do, you, I, I probably should have told everybody, you're probably going to want to draw something that you really like. I love flowers, so I'm more than happy to draw this four times. It just gets kind of tedious if you don't like your drawing because then you're thinking, ugh, why didn't I draw something that I actually really liked? Then it would be joyous, right? <laughs> And this process is something that artists go through a lot. So if you think we just sit down 
at our tables and come up with some amazing idea and then put it down on paper and we're done with it. Um, that is not really what happens most of the time. <laughs> I can attest to that, especially now that I am helping Ekabumi with his drawings. Sometimes we draw them three, four, five times and we keep redrawing them until we get them the way we want them to be. And because of the techniques and the media that we're using, a lot of times we have to do it multiple times. And sometimes it involves a projector, sometimes tracing, um, all different ways that we get our designs down onto canvas or paper. So after you draw it four times, then you have the option of using your the black pen that I suggested uh, and making a black outline for your drawing. And I think I might do that just to show you that that's something that I do a lot. And uh, it also helps me in the painting process because it's easier to see, but it's a stylistic choice. So you don't have to do it if it's something that you don't like. Okay, I think I got all the whole design down. So at this point, if you want to add something else that's uh, geometric to your design, you're gonna have to do it now because it's gonna be too late once you ink this all in. And I'm seeing that I need, I want a shape in the center and it's gonna be easiest for me to have a circle. So, and I don't know what I'm gonna put in it, but later you'll find out because you'll see the video. Um, I mean, you'll see a photograph of it. So if I don't fill it in tonight or now, then uh, you'll see. So I got this really cool compass from my student and friend, Dima. And uh, it's really cool because you can take the pencil out and put pens in there. So if I want to do these pens, I mean, sorry, if I want to do these circles uh, later on, I can with a pen. I'm gonna put two of them in there. And then I think what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of a border so that it matches on the outside. Oops, let me make it a little bit bigger. And that way I'll create kind of unity within the design. I'll have two circles on the inside, two circles on the outside. And there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna take my pen and I'm just going to go over the lines. And I guess as long as I get as I get one of these quadrants painted in and show you how I do it, that's probably good enough because then you can take those techniques and you can keep going with your own design. And this will just help you actually see it better too. And so you see I'm hand drawing the circles. A lot of times I use a ruler and a compass when I'm using, when I'm doing the pencil part, but then I go back to hand drawing the, the finished piece. Oops, just because I want to. But you know what? If you make a mistake in pen, you cannot erase. So, there's a very sad baby across the hall. Um, I don't know if you're hearing that, but. I can relate to you, small child. <laughs> so, as you're doing your outline, if you are following me, oh, and by the way, you wanna use a permanent pen if you're gonna put watercolor over this. So you don't wanna use just any black pen you want it to be permanent ink. And the best way to see if it's permanent ink, if you don't know, is to try it out on a small piece of watercolor paper before you do it and put watercolor on top of it and see if it bleeds because if it does, it's not permanent and you won't be able to use it. It will ruin your, your design. So 
while you're doing this, and this is a time for me sometimes to just be quiet, which is hard when I'm teaching a class, as uh, some of my friends have told me that I talk a lot during my classes. It's just a habit. It's just wanting to fill the space with, with words, but you can take the time and be quiet. Or I can take the time and tell you why I'm rotating my my paper, those kinds of little tips. Um, I find that when my teachers were teaching me in college, those were the times when they would just be kind of going through their process. And I learned a lot in those times. So the reason why I'm rotating my paper or my book is because there's certain angles that are much easier to make lines with your hand than others. So I just know which ones are which, and so I know that to make a line going this way, the arc of my hand moving, I can put my hand down and I can move the whole hand as I'm making the line versus just moving my fingers, which is really uncomfortable for me. So I like to kind of use my whole body, or at least my whole arm when I'm doing this kind of thing, when I'm making large lines. Or sorry, long lines, not large lines. I'm making thin lines. I'm gonna take this clip off of my table because it's really bugging me. Um, so yeah, this is, this is what it's like to make a design because now once you have all of these lines here and you're doing it like me, you are, you are inking them. That's the technical fancy term for this. And I just find that leaving the pencil there looks fine, but a lot of times I, I just can't see what I'm painting and so the black line really helps me. There is a way to actually fix ink mistakes. And you can get a little X-Acto blade and you can kind of scrape off the paper, but then once you put the watercolor on, that can get messy. But I have done it before. So you can see these petals have not been finished because of the way the design was created because it's not a repeating pattern. So I'm gonna just kinda do this. And there might be a little bit different in every quadrant, but it's fine. Again, it's gonna make it look more handmade. Okay, so now I'm gonna finish it off and add a little bit of color to one of the 
quadrants so you get to see how what some of the watercolor techniques are if you're using watercolor. So what I was gonna say, actually two things. Um, the first thing is I know now why I'm not silent during my classes is because if I get into too much of a zone while I'm making art with people and I am leading the class, it's really hard to come back and then uh, give people advice or tips or techniques, um, information. Because when I get into a zone, time literally does not exist. You don't exist. No one exists. Um, and so I think that's why I just kind of mumble <laughs> and talk. And the second thing is that while I'm doing this, sometimes, even if I'm in a total zone, I will start to think about what kind of colors I want to add. Because at this point, this beyond the sky, the universe is the limit uh, when it comes to adding colors. So you're gonna wanna think about that. And what I tell my students is just pick your favorite colors. And I know we all have different favorite colors on different days, but pick your favorite color in the moment. You're not gonna be sad looking at a piece of art with your favorite colors in it. So that's the best advice I can give. And if you don't like color, you can use neutral colors. You can just use muted browns and grays. You don't have to use color. You can also just leave it black and white. And you can have someone else color it in. So this is when I erase the pencil, the graphite, because it does get pretty messy. And that's why I have to vacuum often. Oops, and uh, you can fix your design. And you can also do some black ink later when the watercolor has dried. So you don't have to finish it right this second. You can add more later. And I'm gonna add something to the center, but I don't know what yet. Um, I bet some of you can guess what I'm gonna probably add to it. <laughs> um, so if you've seen my photos lately and it's not a sunset, it's the other, it's the other thing that I'm obsessed with. It's not a color, well, it might be a color wheel. Hmm, you never know. Uh, but there's three things I'm obsessed with right now and it's not a color wheel and it's not a sunset. So that might end up in my, in the center later. It'll be a surprise for all of you. And if you're doing this with me or if you do it later with me, please send me a photo because Davy made my day by sending me her photo, their, their photo. And, uh, it just made my day to see what people create from my teaching. So, and you know, teaching Zoom, I don't make people, that's another thing about my classes is that I don't, it's not mandatory to share. So a lot of times I don't see what people are, are creating. Okay, so we're gonna get our watercolors out. And now that I don't really have a quadrant anymore, I'm just gonna start filling it in. And at some point, I'm going to have to go. So uh, we'll figure that out when it happens. <laughs> okay, so this was one way to make a mandala. Um, and mandala means circle. circle and, uh, and loosely and simply. But um, it's again, it's not a traditional mandala that you would use for meditation or spiritual practice. Um, mine tend to be more decorative and uh, more personal. So uh, that's why it's mandala inspired. And so concentric circles, designs, geometric, whatever, if, you've, if you're uh, coming on at this point and you're just wondering what I'm doing, I'm just demoing one of my classes. Uh, Friday nights, Friday night, geometry and mandala. So inspired. So now I'm going to show you two different ways of putting the watercolor down on paper. Now there's more ways than just two, but uh, you'd have to take my watercolor class, which is um, which is going to be Friday nights. We're all, we're going to get into technique, but um, if you want more technique about watercolor, um, that's my Saturday class. 
and we're gonna do flora and fauna and beyond. And we're gonna pick all of our favorite subjects, all of my students' favorite subjects from the past two years because it's, it's a two year anniversary of my classes. So, but this is gonna be two, two different ways. So first we're gonna do wet on wet. And if you've never done this before, it's really fun. And it's a way to get to know the watercolor or get to know watercolor because watercolor is very unique in the way that it reacts to water that almost no other paint does. And that's it's mostly why people think they, they can't control the watercolor once they put it down on paper because they probably learned wet on wet when they were a child and they just don't want to use it anymore because they want to control where the color goes, where the pigment goes, right? And you can't really do that with watercolor when you're using wet on wet. But there's another technique called wet on dry and when you use them together, it's when you paint wet uh, watercolor onto dry paper and you can control it a little bit more. And so using both of them together, I have found over the past two years has been so much fun because you get this the quality, the unique quality of watercolor and um, that looks like no other kind of paint and you can make it look like what you want because there are ways that you can let the paper dry and then put more layers on. So let's play with a little bit of wet on wet and I'll just pick, uh, maybe I'll pick like every other petal to do this with. So I'm gonna start with this one and I'm gonna pick a color and what I tell most of my students, since I have a little bit more time with you all, I'm gonna use a color wheel. I do tell everybody that takes my classes that in order to have your paintings not be muddy, I'm gonna do my air quotes, muddy. Everybody calls us, <laughs> like, how do I get my watercolors to not look muddy? Well, one way to do it is to keep this in mind and if I put my hand or maybe let's see if I have a piece of paper hold on one sec it's much easier when I do this okay so it's um do the view it's this one yeah so if I dissect a color wheel in half and I just use some of the colors from the right side, it's going to look less muddy because these colors are analogous, they're related, they're cousins. Um, if I take these three out and I just use those two colors, these are kind of opposites, they're not exact opposites, but this might turn into brown. But if I use these colors or these colors, they're not. And same with if I dissect it the other way and I just use cool colors because these are the warm colors and these are cool colors. So that being said, watercolor is transparent and it's meant to be layered. So if you choose a color scheme like this, but wanna add a little bit of this into it, you can add them in on top once it's dried and then they won't turn into brown because, um, well, again, take one of my color classes if you wanna learn that, but we will always talk about color in all of my classes because it's something that we're going to be using so I love teaching about it. Okay so back to wet on wet. I'm going to pick my color scheme which is going to be probably warm colors to start with and uh, there's two ways to use the watercolor. There's one way to um, use it directly from here onto the paper and there's one way to use your palette so I'm going to show you that as well today in the next 15 minutes. So you take your clean water and your brush and for the wet on wet, um, we can do both. I'll show you what it looks like to put, to take it right from the palette and then I'll show you how to prep a color and take it from there and put it on here, okay? So we'll do both. So the first one is going to be, I'm gonna take it directly from the palette. So first you, dip your brush in, you get some water on there, and you paint it directly onto the paper. 
and it depends on how much water you put on there is what the paint is gonna do. And what I tell everyone is to pay attention to how much water you put down. And to do that, you kind of have to tilt it up a little bit and see, is the water moving around? Is there a thick amount of it? You know, just depends on a lot of things. But, and then what you're gonna do is you're going to reconstitute your paint. So you always wanna use watercolor dry because uh, if you squeeze it out into your palette and then directly use it on your, on your paper, you're gonna waste it. So you always kinda wanna just let it dry a little bit before you, um, before you do that. I'm not gonna waste that. I'm gonna put it down here because I'm gonna show you how to use it from there as well. So you'll see that the paint starts to bleed it's called a bleed or a blossom, and you can move it around with your paintbrush, or you can let it be. You can do it however you want. Let's create a little bit of, uh, of unity by just making all of these petals similar. So I'm gonna try that again, just so you can see it again. Paint my petal just with water, and then I'm gonna take some water and take some paint. See how it looks different every time you put it down? This is why some people don't like watercolor, is because then they can't do anything with it, right? But the cool thing is, is that you can add another color It kind of looks almost like tie-dye. That's what happens to the, the color. And again, if you put too much down, you can, not again, but if you put too much time, too much paint down on your paper, you can suck it up a little bit like a sponge with your brush just by cleaning it off if you want, drying it, and then just kind of running it through the paint. Kind of fun to do. So we're gonna do this two more times. Just so you get a hang of it. And just pay attention to what happens, how much water you're putting down, how much paint you're putting in, and just make a mental note of that. Just remember, just witness it, pay attention, be mindful of it, and then you're gonna learn what happens when you put a little bit of paint in there versus a lot of paint, uh, color. Um, when it's half dry, what the, what the paint does. And you're gonna string all of those experiences together and that's how you're gonna learn. Yes, you can learn from watching people and it's a wonderful way to go on to TikTok or to, to YouTube and to, to learn from other artists, just watching them paint. It's, it's like this, you're watching me right now but you're gonna probably learn a lot more when you try it yourself. So, and you're gonna learn from your mistakes and when you're one of my students, if you make mistakes, I always try to help you fix them or learn from them. So, uh, So don't worry and don't be afraid to, to you know, make mistakes or not know what to do next. Um, I always say that if you take one of my classes once, you're always my student. So I'm always available for, to help you. Okay, so just kind of playing around with the color as much as you want. You can also drip some some water back into these and see what happens. It's kind of like this cool reverse bleed blossom thing that happens where it makes a little bit of, kind of pushes the color away. You kind of have to do it to sort of see what it does. Okay, so 
We're gonna do wet on wet again, but we're gonna do it with less color. So when you go directly from your water cup to your brush, to the paint set, and then onto your paint, your paper, you're gonna get this really bright, co brightly colored uh, paper, dyed paper, right? But if you prep your color first by putting a little bit of paint into the side, into your palette, you're gonna get a lot lighter of a color. So I'll show you that with both of these colors and then we'll I'll show you how to do wet on dry and then you're gonna go and play. And I'm gonna take my dog for a walk. <laughs> so this is, this is what I consider or call, I kind of deem prepping a color. You're preparing it to go onto the... Okay, so if you drip a little bit of watercolor onto your paper, don't worry, just take the cleanest part of your, of your paper towel or your towel and just blot it up. It's okay, even if it's a splotch, you can paint over it. Okay, so we're gonna do these with wet on wet and ooh, look what happens. If I touch my paintbrush into the area that already has paint on and it's still wet, all of that paint flows into that area. It's kind of cool actually. So I don't know if you can tell, but see how much lighter it is? It's because there's water in here and there's also water on the paper. So it's gonna come out a lot. Here, let me make it more obvious, put more water. So if you wanna lighten up a color ever or make it uh, less vibrant or um, I guess less saturated, you can say, you just add water to it. It's like adding white to paint. Adding water to your paint is like adding white to paint. So you can see it's a little bit lighter and that's what happens. Just keep adding water until you get it to the, the shade that you want it. So I'm gonna try that again. Will that happen again? No, that was already dry. If it's already dry, it won't happen again, but it will if it's, if it's still wet. It'll probably happen here. Yep. So I just put water down next to it. And this is another reason why people don't like watercolors because they've tried this before or they're painting and they didn't realize something was still wet and that happens and it's really frustrating for people. So you just have to let it totally dry 100% to the point where it's bone dry, where it's where the paper's almost warm, it's not cold. Because that way you can put another layer on next to it and it won't bleed into it. So I'm just making some petals that are a little bit lighter. So for my design, I don't have all of them the same vibrancy. Some of them are a little bit lighter, more subtle. And then again, this is still wet on wet. And then I'll show you wet on dry. Um, one more. That one was wet, so it's gonna bleed into the where I'm painting. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna show you a little close up so you get to see what watercolor does when it does what it wants to do. That was the one of the reverse wet on wets when I put water back into the color where the color was on the paper and I just dripped some water into it. That's what happens to it. It does that. It's like a white splotch. In the... Okay, so that is wet on wet. And I'm gonna, every one of these classes, I have to use my blow dryer, which is really funny. And you want to be really careful when you're using your blow dryer. Um, you didn't have to bring one to a Facebook live class today, but if you're doing, I'm just dabbing some of the paint off so it doesn't go flying across the page. But everyone's going to have to listen to my blow dryer. <laughs> it's just a really great tool to have when you're using watercolor. So 
and I can't mute live Facebook. So hold on one second. <laughs> the difference between where I prepped the color which means I added water to it I added a lot more water to it and where I took it directly out of the palette and this is why I like using it um, I like doing the prep style because then you start off with a lighter um, layer and it's hard to layer on top of something so dark right and and vibrant so it's so much easier to layer on top of this kind of um, shade of color so but I use both um, in some of my paintings depending on what so now I'm gonna paint directly onto the paper from without putting water down so it's called wet on dry paper so wet on dry and this is when you can you definitely have to prep your colors so we already have this this color prepped so I'll just show you what color it turns out. And now I can go right up to this petal and paint right next to it because it's dry. So I'm just painting in the shape and I'm going to pick a couple of the petals to do that with so that they're this at this point I'm gonna break the pattern so this is a pattern, right? But now I'm just gonna pick some random petals and I'm playing around with just one color for now. And I'm gonna add a little bit more pink to this one make it a little darker and you'll see I have to remember where I where it's dry and where it's not dry because if I go right up against another petal that's wet it's just gonna bleed right into it So I'm just doing flat color, meaning I'm not doing a blend or anything like that. That's a little bit more advanced and it's something that you'd have to practice, but it's a skill that you can learn. So don't ever think that you can't learn how to watercolor just because you don't think you know how to draw or anything like that. It's just skills like anything else. Um, learning technique and skills and developing skills and a nurturing environment which is what I try to create in my classes so and then what we can do is this is kind of fun you can actually mix two colors together make a third color just by using those two colors And you can see I'm not really paying attention to painting inside the lines. Sometimes I like to do that, but it's not always necessary. So you can see I'm just randomly picking petals to do this color with. 
There wasn't a line there, so I'm gonna have to fix that. Okay. And I can show you what it looks like to do a second layer on wet on dry. So it's dry there, and it's just this color here, Oops, this red color, adding a little bit more pigment, not too much, but you can make, whoops, maybe a little bit more, it's kind of hard to see, but you can make layers on top of these petals just by maybe making a design. The ones that were just red. So this is what people do. They do layering on top of layering on top of layering with watercolors and that's how they, not everyone, but that's how they do it. So Let's see, let's do a little recap. <laughs> we, we learned how to do um, quadrants in a circle, so four quadrants. We, uh, we took one of our quadrants and we folded it in half, right? So that gave us half of a quadrant, right? So, I did a different design on each one, a little bit different with petals. And then I made a little bit of transfer paper on the back. I sketched, I mean, I traced back over my lines. I created the whole design. I'm leaving the center for later. I'm gonna add something to it. And then I showed you wet on wet, coming straight from the palette, wet on wet, coming from a prepped color, which makes it lighter and then wet on dry, which I just started randomly picking different petals to paint in. So again, this is only one technique that we'll be exploring and we'll go be going a little bit deeper into it during my Friday night watercolor class that is uh, geometry and mandala inspired watercolors. And I just wanted to give you a little taste of what it's like and so, um, I would love to see you. There's plenty of space. There's always plenty of space in all of my classes. So please come, please join us. And all you need is watercolor or whatever materials you would like to add color to your drawings, a pencil, some paper, and it's great to have a ruler, um, some other things that are, are optional or like a triangle or um, a compass, some shape templates but it's pretty low uh um low commitment in the sense that you don't have to buy hundreds of dollars worth of art supplies <laughs> and also low commitment is that it's eight weeks and you can show up to anyone any class that you would like and you have the video to use at your own pace when you can't show up live so Thank you for watching my video. Uh, this will be, this recording will be on my YouTube channel. So go there, like me, follow me, do all those fun things. If you're inspired, share it. If you're not inspired, but you know people who are. And I just appreciate you uh, watching and listening and supporting me as I, as I continue my pandemic art classes. So. Be well, be safe, and I will talk to you and see you on the Facebook sometime soon.